In this video, I wanted to explain why you should never fall for the dream job. It's a scam that most people fall for, so don't fall for the trap. It's an illusion that will keep you stuck in the rat race. Imagine this, you find a job at some company that you absolutely love, and you love it so much that you work weekends, you work harder than most, and not because someone tells you, but because you actually love it. You love what you do. You have something amazing that some people call flow, and it feels great, it doesn't feel like work, so you can push yourself harder beyond your limits. You can work harder, faster, longer. You perform excellent work and everybody is impressed. And you get a fancy title or maybe a pay raise. And if you do a really good job, your boss gives you the wink and the gun. And your spouse is proud of you and your family is impressed. And it sounds completely amazing, doesn't it? It sounds like the dream job you wish that you had, right? Well don't sing hallelujah just yet. What if I was to tell you that this is actually the worst thing that can happen to you? What if I told you that this is something that you should actually never ever strive for? And I mean that, no exaggerating, no bullshit. If you think that you found the dream job, you should quit as soon as humanly possible. Let me explain. It will all make sense in a couple of minutes. So there are two aspects to consider here. First of all, when you do what you love, it can easily become a vicious cycle if you are not careful. Now, most young people, I'm sorry to say this, but you just do not know what I'm talking about because you lack the work-life experience. Now, this could sound like a paradox, but you will actually get burnt out much easier from a job that you love than a job that you hate. And if you think about it, if you don't care about your job, you're not gonna put your heart and soul into it. So you can't give 100%. But if you have a job that you absolutely love, you'll be able to push yourself beyond your limits. As a consultant, I've often replaced people who've hit a wall. And in none of those cases was it because their job was too demanding or because their bosses were some kind of horrible tyrants. It was because they worked themselves too hard. They work late hours and they work on the weekends and not because someone told them to do it, but because they either loved it or felt the pressure to deliver no matter what. Now, personally, I've never been burnt out because I've never loved any of my consulting assignments, but I have been close a couple of times. And in all those cases, it was because I felt some kind of pride or enjoyment from the job itself. And most people will blindly assume that they couldn't get burnt out, that they are somehow capable of stopping themselves. But people are sadly not as evolved as we might think. We're actually not that much more evolved than hamsters in a hamster wheel. We sort of laugh at how, you know, silly hamsters are. The thing about hamsters is that they love to run. They love it so much that they will run for hours in that hamster wheel. Sometimes it even gets so bad that they get sick from fatigue and even dehydration. And people are actually not any different. When we love to do something, we will do it even if it hurts us. And this I actually do know from personal experience. I love to make YouTube videos and I can easily work for hours editing a video to perfection, not even noticing that I've stopped eating or drinking and I will not be taking any breaks because I won't feel that I need it. And when I've uploaded the video to YouTube, I suddenly notice how my body and brain feel completely exhausted. And this is why I keep my videos simple these days. I focus on the message and not the wrapping paper. Now, the second reason why you never want to strive for a dream job, and this is actually more important, is because why would you want to waste your precious time on this earth to work hard in that hamster wheel to make some company richer? It's just doesn't make sense to me. You want to work extra hard so some fat pricks who own the company can buy a bigger mansion or eat at a fancier restaurant? It just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's seriously one of the most annoying and haunting thoughts that I have throughout the day, that people are so blindly working extra hard to make other people richer. So, be extra careful if you happen to have a job that you love. Nobody is immune to this. Now, a close friend of mine who is arguably one of the smartest people I've ever known. He once worked a job where he loved it so much that he worked for free for many months because the company was in financial problems or something. 
and he was actually taking out loans just to be able to survive. And he worked so hard that even his girlfriend left him. And I remember when he told me about it, he was just so puzzled when he got home and she wasn't there. He couldn't see how the job he loved was ruining his life just because he found the dream job. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a difference between finding meaningful work and a dream job. Finding a meaningful work in life is actually important because it gives your life a sense of purpose and you want to work with what makes you happy. But people are different and this is why I never tell people to start a YouTube channel. That's more my thing. It may not be yours. In fact, most people that I've actually inspired to do this have quit after like two or three videos. So it's not for everyone. People are unique and have different needs and you want to help people or you want to make a difference. I don't care what your reason is, but just be careful of the path you design for yourself. Oh, and a word or two about the whole hustle mentality. There is a lot of motivation speakers and successful people out there telling us to work hard, to get up at four in the morning, like The Rock or Elon Musk, getting ahead of the competition, as they would say. Well, you don't need to worry about the competition if you just do your thing. If you focus on one thing, as most people are, you will need to outsmart the competition. But if you do your thing, meaning that you focus on your niche of different interests, then you don't need to be outworking the competition. And I'm going to dive into this topic in another episode. But for now, just trust me, this idea of outworking the competition, it's outdated. Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, you have to work your ass off to win in life. You can't be successful unless you work really hard. Okay, that was like the worst Arnold impression ever. And I did it on purpose. But hey, who am I to challenge a former Mr. Olympia and a former megastar in Hollywood? Okay, so two things. One, we often hear celebrities say that you have to believe in your dream and work really hard and then somehow magically things will happen. But we never hear about people who gave everything and failed in life. And two, I would say with experienced conviction that the hustle mentality is not the right path for anyone. There is a lot of successful people out there who will tell you that they work their ass off and they will say that they owe all their success to all that hard work they put in. And it makes sense that they would say it. I mean, their personal lives are hollow. They have nothing. They do drugs and they probably damage their health because of their chase of success. So if you think about it, can you actually think of any celebrity or successful person who hasn't ruined their life in some way because of their chase for success? I mean, hey, even Arnold banged his maid and ruined his family. He worked so hard on his career that he failed to keep his family together. And I'm just using Arnold as an example of human nature, not hating the guy. I'm saying that anybody with his drive for success will fail. So what is the solution then? Well, it's very simple, actually, and also very hard at the same time. Instead of working hard, you have to work smart, you have to work efficient, and you have to use leverage. So for example, let's say you wanna help people with personal problems. Instead of working with them one-on-one -on -one, like some therapist, write a book or create a course or use the internet to reach as many people as possible. Like this video, I could have spent an hour explaining to one person how it all works, but instead I created a video that could in theory reach millions of people around the world. Now, if you want to make people aware of the dangers of global warming, you can stand with a picket sign on the highway or you can make content on social media. Whatever you want to do, you can leverage that to work smarter, efficient, and not risking your health. But most importantly, not getting used by rich company owners. What I think is important is that you design a life with not just a clear goal, but a clear vision of how you want your life overall to look like. And not just focus on the business, but the personal side as well. So how do I do it? Well, as corny as it sounds, I actually write a journal every day. I like to see my life as a movie where I write the script. And sometimes you need to rewrite scenes, improve them. And that's what writing a journal does to my life. And I want to cover this more in depth in a future episode. But for now, all you really need to understand about me is that my drive in life is to design a life that I believe in. So for example, my personal philosophy is that no matter how successful I ever get, I never ever want to hire people to work for me. 
I don't want to use people. I want to use AI and efficient computer programming to work more efficiently, but I don't want to use people. I still do want to work with people, but then it would be more for hiring their business services. So I could definitely see myself outsourcing aspects of my business to other one-man businesses. And I think or hope at least that the future will be more business to business in the sense that it will be like people like you and me, and we both have our businesses and we work together to enrich our lives. Now, I wanted to end this episode sharing a personal experience that happened quite recently. As a consultant, I work at very different places doing very different things. And a few months ago, I was given the option to work an assignment that was way beneath me. It was to work as a receptionist and I took it. And I'm actually very glad that I did. Now, for most people, I don't think that being a receptionist is something to be ashamed of. But for someone like me, it was a very basic job. For about three months, I was answering the phone. I took resumes from people who were looking for work. I called people in the company when their guests had arrived. I ordered flowers when someone was leaving the company. Or I ordered pickups for different packages. Needless to say, it was very different from what I usually do, which is to work with analyzing and creating forecasts and, you know, planning advanced supply chain projects. But the weird thing was I actually loved working as a receptionist because it gave me a lot of free time working on my own personal projects. And I spent a lot of time just thinking and having a calm mind and I wasn't stressed and I didn't even dread going to work every day. But what was even weirder was that because the job was so basic, it was actually very easy to do a great job. And people that I work with thought that I was the best receptionist that they've ever had. The only downside to this job was that I was kind of embarrassed. Uh, you know, I didn't put it in my resume on LinkedIn and I avoided telling past coworkers what I was doing these days. And I'm going to be honest, I was actually ashamed of my job, but why? I mean, I enjoyed it. I wasn't stressed from it. So I have a theory that this whole thing started in school when we were taking classes and doing tests and subjects that we didn't like. And this sort of programmed us to doing things that society picks for us, essentially doing things that we don't like. You know, I was a pretty good student in school, and I wonder what that actually means. Like, when I think about it, it just means that I was very good at pretending I liked a subject that I really didn't. And I often think about how I would do things differently if I could go back in time. I definitely would have skipped more classes and I definitely would not have tried to ace every single test. I would have focused more on what I do today. You know, just doing things that I like and creating digital assets that generate passive income. So what I wish for you is that you find a boring job that gives you time, energy, and incentive to create a better life for yourself. And I mean that. I hope you find a job that gives you the headspace you need to think about a better life path. Now, if you are still not convinced, if you think that I'm wrong, then you should not be subscribing to my podcast, my YouTube channel, or my newsletter. But, you know, parting ways, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. You do your thing and I do mine. And if you think that the best thing in life is to find some job where you are stressed all the time and live paycheck to paycheck, if you think that's the best thing to strive for, then I wish you the best. I really do. I'm not being condescending. I hope you find a way to make it work out. But if you want to design and build a life where you can leverage technology like AI and the internet to create a sustainable lifestyle where you are in control, a life where money doesn't control you, a life where you are the master of your destiny, then um, hmm, stick around. I have a lot more to tell you. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.